Hey folks, this is Mark with Eigen Designs, and today in the shop, we're going to be doing an entry-level woodworking project. We'll be making three different charcuterie boards using different pieces of equipment around the shop. The first one we'll be making with a bandsaw. The second we'll be making with the CNC where we can batch out a couple at one time. And the last one will be an epoxy charcuterie board. And for that, we're going to be partnering with Chance over at Custom Grains. Chance has his own woodworking business in Minnesota and has become TikTok famous for a lot of the epoxy projects he does on social media. So it's going to be a great video. Stick around and you can even see Chance take his best shot to try to get my channel demonetized. Let's go. For the first board, we're going to be using a bandsaw, but you could just as easily use a jigsaw or a scroll saw to achieve the same thing. Now you might be wondering why we're doing the same project using different tools. And the reason for that is I often get questions from newer woodworkers who are just getting started. Hey, what's a good project that I can do? I don't have a jointer. I don't have a planer. I don't have a CNC. What are some of the things that I can do? So I thought this would be a really good introductory video to show how the same project can be made using different tools that you might have as you acquire new tools in your shop. For this particular build, I'm gonna be doing a few panel glue ups where I just have some walnut pieces spliced with a little bit of mahogany just to make it a little bit more interesting. But if you don't wanna do that, you can just use a single piece of wood and go from there. Before cutting anything on the bandsaw, I first mark up where I want the board to be cut. And I use a roll of painter's tape to mark out where the handle is going to go. And then I also use it to have a consistent radius of curvature on all the bins that I'm going to be using on the charcuterie board. Once all the designs are on the board, I then go over to my bandsaw and begin making the cuts. For areas where there's a high radius of curvature, I first do some relief cuts to allow the pieces to be removed as I'm making the cut. And I take this part very slowly, trying to preserve as much symmetry as I can while I'm using the bandsaw. Now, if you don't have a bandsaw, but you have a jigsaw or a scroll saw, you can achieve the same thing using those tools as well. An optional step that you can take, rather than freehanding the entire cut like I'm doing here, you can get close to the line and then attach an acrylic template and use a flush trim router bit to trace around the exterior contour of the handle of the charcuterie board using one of these templates that's made by a company like Crafted Elements. If you're someone that doesn't have a CNC but is looking to make these in high volume and have high degree of accuracy, that's a really good alternative to a CNC. Once all my work with the bandsaw is done, I head over to my router table to put a chamfered edge around the edges of the board. If you don't have a router table, you could just as easily use a palm router. Once that's done, I then use a paddle bit to drill a hole for the handle so that it can be hung up. I make sure to flip the board over before drilling all the way through to minimize any tear out on the other side of the board. I then take time to sand all sides of the board, starting at 120 grit and progressing my way up through to 220 grit. Chance is going to cover the water popping process and why it's important to do for a project that's going to see water, so I'll have him cover that later in the video. Lastly, I finish the charcuterie board using a little bit of mineral oil and a sponge. This is a very quick finish that's food safe and can be readily reapplied if you ever see the color of your boards beginning to fade after extended use. If you're lucky enough to have a CNC in your shop, then a charcuterie board is a great project for you. Not only can you batch them out in bulk consistently in relatively short period of time, but you can also get really creative with the designs that you choose. I made this one in Fusion 360 and I'll have the plans linked for you in the description below if you're interested. 
these charcuterie boards have actually been one of my highest selling items that I make because they're quite versatile in how they can be used and they're pretty cheap to produce so you can price them very competitively if you're trying to make money at woodworking. Once everything is set up, it takes about five minutes to cut out each charcuterie board. Anytime I'm cutting all the way through my material, I always secure it to the spoil board using some CA glue and some painter's tape. This will ensure that as you cut all the way through the material, you don't run the risk of going through any clamps that are holding the material down. And if you set your depth just right, it won't eat into your spoil board. Once the boards are cut out with the CNC, I follow the same process as before, where I route a chamfered edge along the edges, I sand to 220, and then I finish with mineral oil. I'm really excited for Chance to go through this epoxy board. And this one's interesting because you don't need a lot of woodworking equipment to do these. And there's still a ton of variability in the customization that you can do in the mold that you select and the colors that you do. So Chance has been a buddy of mine for a while. He owns Custom Grains and he was a subscriber to me whenever I only had a couple hundred subscribers. And now he's blown up on TikTok and he's got a huge following. So I'm going to turn it over to Chance who's going to walk through how to build one of these boards. Thanks for the introduction, Mark. Like I said, my name is Chance and I own Custom Grains. And I'm going to show you how to create a unique epoxy charcuterie board with the help of the crafted element silicone mold. I started with both faces actually planed from my lumber mill and here I'm just jointing one edge and then bringing that jointed edge to the table saw to create a perfectly S4S board. Now with a perfectly S4S board, I'm just marking where I want to cut for that diagonal line. Then I'm using my miter saw and I'm actually cutting this at a 16 degree angle. For all silicone molds, you're going to want to use some sort of epoxy mold release spray. Here I am, I'm just spraying it like I would normally spray my Pam for a cooktop pan. Now for epoxy, I actually prefer liquid glass super clear. I've tried darn near 10 different brands and this is by far the most quality and the most affordable epoxy maker out on the market these days. And just like what your high school crush said, you better rubber up. And for the epoxy pigment, I'm actually using Tropical Blue made by May Spring. Uh, just use a little bit of a paint stir on a drill attachment. I like to mix it for right around three to five minutes, all depending on how much quantity. And just how satisfying this epoxy pour is on the mold. As you can tell in the background, I had a little bit of excess epoxy, so I made some coasters. To pop the remaining bubbles, I just use a little bit of a torch, and then that pops all the bubbles. After about four days here in Minnesota with my climate, it is ready to demold. And now you can use a drum sander, a hand sander, a planer even, just to get the wood level with the epoxy. Uh, my go-to is a drum sander, just because it kills two birds with one stone. Now there is a little bit of a gap between the wood and the silicone mold itself, so that's where the epoxy went. I'm just using my Rockler Crosscut Jig to cut off the excess epoxy. And then after all said and done, I like to hand sand it to 220 and then water pop it. And then I actually go up to 400 grit after I water pop it two times. And now I'm using an eighth inch roundover bit on my Milwaukee cordless palm router. And like I said, here you see I'm using the Diablo Sandnet 400 grit. And then I'm using my Rotex 125. 
And for sanding, you don't need a Festool sander. In fact, you don't even need an electric sander. You could hand sand, um, but time is money. And you might be thinking to yourself, why are they water popping and what is the purpose of water popping? Uh, so what water popping does is that it raises the wood fibers and then once it raises the wood fibers, you just sand it again to make it smoother. Um, and after so many times, you know, the wood fibers don't get raised from water. And then the end user would not feel the wood fibers raised when they wash their charcuterie board. While my wife is out of the house, I use her favorite bath towel just to protect my workbench from the wood conditioner. I would hate to have the wood conditioner get onto my workbench. <laughs> And here are the final photos. I thought it turned out amazing. Thanks for watching. And also thanks, Mark, for asking to do a collab with me. I feel honored. If you want to see more of Chance, I'm going to have his socials linked in the description below. He's got an Instagram at TikTok. He's got a website for all of his woodworking products. And he's actually affiliated with Crafted Elements. So if you want to get $10 off of any purchase at Crafted Elements, just use the code CG10. And that'll give you $10 off any mold or any template that you buy. All right, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you're able to take something back to your shop and this is giving you some ideas. I want to say thank you to Chance from Custom Grames for this collaboration. And I will see you guys on the next one.